Hey everyone, today we've got another brilliant case study for you and a patient who has wrist pain with a condition that does present commonly in your clinics. Can you work out what's going on with this patient? If you're ready to find out, let's dive in. So everyone, today's patient is a 28-year-old female who's presenting with right-sided wrist pain. She hasn't had any particular injury or trauma, but she's noticed this wrist pain has gotten worse since she gave birth to her child three weeks ago. She actually noticed that she was developing wrist pain in the last month of her pregnancy, but since having the child, she's noticed that it's become a lot worse. She's had an x-ray which has shown no bony abnormalities and nothing to worry about there. Her aggravating factors, the key principal one is lifting up her child. Of course, she's doing a lot of that at the moment because she's just had a newborn baby. And she's finding that typing on her computer also seems to irritate her symptoms. What eases? Well, she's not using any painkillers because of the fact that she's just given birth to her child and she doesn't want that to affect her breastfeeding. So she's been using ice on the area to see if that can settle things down. In terms of her general health, she has type 2 diabetes, which is relatively well controlled, and she's using metformin, which is a diabetes medication, in order to help manage this. So next, let's check out her objective assessment with the examination. So first of all, you find that she clearly has pain on the radial side of the wrist, and when you observe it, it almost appears as if it's a little bit more swollen on the radial side compared to the ulnar side. You then go and palpate the wrist joint, you find that there's no pain over the scaphoid, no pain over the thumb itself, there's no pain on the fingers or the ulnar side of the hand, but over the radio carpal joint over the wrist, particularly around the radial styloid, it is very sore for her. So next you look at active range of movement and you find that she has generally good range of movement for the majority of wrist movements. However, ulnar deviation is clearly very sore for her. You also find that active radial deviation is a bit sore, but the particular movements that seem to irritate her are thumb movements with thumb extension and thumb abduction, both palmar abduction and radial abduction being quite sore for her. Then we look at resisted tests, isometric resisted, and you find that once again, thumb abduction and extension are the key culprits. And here you find that they develop pain when you test these and there's only four out of five strength. You also look at her grip strength, which is reduced on that side and clearly re-irritates her pain. You also perform Finkelstein's test, which is positive for her and does aggravate her symptoms. So, with all that in mind, what do you think is going on? What's your diagnosis for this patient? So everyone, our diagnosis, what do we think is going on? Well, this patient was suspected of having de Quervain's tenosynovitis. So this is an irritation or a tenosynovitis around the radial styloid of the wrist, which is where two particular tendons run. These are abductor pollicis longus and extensor pollicis brevis. And you'll see on this diagram that there's a yellow sheath that runs around them, which is the extensor retinaculum of the wrist joint. What we find happens with de Quervain's is that this sheath compresses down on those tendons. So therefore, when the wrist starts moving, it aggravates the patient's symptoms. Now, whilst not every patient with de Quervain's presents for this reason, Newborn parents are a really common demographic, particularly the mother who's given birth to the child. There's a couple of reasons for this. Number one, we mentioned that she was experiencing pain in the last month of her pregnancy. And that's because when a female is in her last month or the last trimester, she starts to notice that there is an increase in swelling around various joints in her body. But particularly, we seem to find that it presents around the wrist and hand. So when you've got more swelling, more compression around that area on top of the sheath that then compresses the tendons, it can be sore. However, the other big thing that we find is that when newborn parents are constantly lifting their children, they're doing this repeated radial deviation movement that involves a combination of thumb abduction and extension as well. And that's why this repeated overload into these movements really aggravates symptoms for newborn parents. And so we find that happens a lot with this demographic. So some of the key points that helped us diagnose it, number one, the localized pain at the radial styloid, which was aggravating those two tendons we mentioned. We also looked at the resisted tests of thumb abduction and extension. So using those two tendons, which are irritated. And of course, we had a positive Finkelstein's test. So if you're not familiar with this test, it involves 
asking your patient to make a fist with the thumb outside of the fingers, and then the examiner will passively ulnar deviate the wrist to so to stretch those tendons. So that's part one of the test. Part two is where you repeat it, but this time with the thumb tucked into the fingers. And so we passively ulnar deviate there and see if this increases and reproduces their pain because the fact that the thumb is tucked in will put more stress and more strain on those tendons. And that was clearly the case for this patient. All of these allowed us to come to the diagnosis of de Quer veins. So let's quickly talk through how we might treat this patient. Well, there are three key options. We have to remember that this is the very early stage of this patient's life with her new child. And therefore, she is naturally going to be a little bit apprehensive about certain painkillers and also apprehensive about steroid injections, which are sometimes used for patients who have ongoing symptoms. So first of all, the most simple thing we can do is provide them with a thumb spiker splint, as you can see here on the screen, which will really support that thumb, keep it in a more neutral position, and will stop such aggravation of extension and abduction because the patient won't be able to perform those movements as easily. What we can also do is to try and gradually get this, these tendons moving in a manner that's comfortable for them. And I sometimes find that isometric exercises, like you can see here using the elastic band, can be a good way of trying to do this. However, if these exercises are painful, I will absolutely delay them because I don't want to be giving my patient more things to do that are going to aggravate them. So we mentioned that this patient is three weeks uh, following the birth of her child. So if they're painful at three weeks, you might wait a little bit longer, see if you can settle their symptoms down with a thumb spiker and then see if it's worth reintroducing them. Now, the other key thing to do, like with any tendon-based pathology, is to look at load management and try and, in normal cases, reduce the amount of activity that that patient is doing with their wrist. Now, there is no way on earth that you can ask a newborn mum to stop lifting her child. And we really shouldn't be thinking that it's going to be easy for our patient in this scenario to just stop everything they're doing with their child. However, what we can do is help change the way that they're lifting. So for example, can we focus on lifting with the thumbs tucked in so that the thumbs are not being actively involved in the movement as much? Can we encourage the parent to be holding their child in more of a cradle-like manner rather than an upright manner like this? These might be little things that you can do where with breastfeeding, once again, making sure that the parent is not using their hand as much as possible, using the other hand or using pillows to prop their child in place. All little things and little tips that might be able to reduce the pressure on the thumb during this crucial time. If our patient wasn't improving, then it might be that we look towards a steroid injection, which can be given uh, following childbirth, but naturally newborn mums are very cautious of it. However, in the majority of cases, we can always reassure and educate our patients that six to eight weeks following childbirth, symptoms do tend to settle quite a lot. So really important things that we can learn for our patients. So everyone, I really hope you enjoyed this. If you have, please support us by smashing that like button and write more in the comments if you want more case studies from us. Remember, we've got loads more resources on our Instagram account at Clinical Physio. And if you want to join us on Clinical Physio Membership, link in the description below, we have a whole series of case studies called the Case Study Club, looking at musculoskeletal, respiratory and neurology case studies where we have an expert physio come on and talk all through their patients to give you all the clinical reasoning you need. So if case studies suit you, be sure to check that out. My name's Khalid. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon here on Clinical Physio.